Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Chantel and um, first of all I want to apologize for the uh, delay in getting another video out this past week. Um, if you saw in my community tab on YouTube I mentioned I uh, my computer was acting up. I got some bad Windows errors and I had to clear them up. It took me a few days to get around to getting it figured out but I think Hopefully, I got it figured out. Uh, so the computer that I use to edit videos seems to be back up and running, and hopefully now uh, programming will resume uh, uh, on it. Hopefully on more or less its normal schedule going forward. So crossing fingers for that. Um, also, I will say I, I am wearing my Star Wars T-shirt, one of my Star Wars T-shirts today, uh, because uh, as of today uh, I'm filming on May the fourth, and so. Uh, even though this video won't go up until a few days later, I am going to say a belated May the 4th be with you. Um, I am actually going to do at some point a video about um, my some of my favorite Star Wars books. Um, because I do read a lot of Star Wars books and... Um, I know someone at one point asked me if I would if I would do a video like that and I absolutely intend to do that. Uh, but I have a couple of other videos that I want to do first. So, yeah, that'll probably be... I'll, I'll probably try to get to it this month. So I'll probably try to get to it by the end of May. We'll see. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, this video <laughs> is going to be uh, my April wrap-up video. My April reading wrap-up video. I think I'm going to actually do two uh, wrap-up videos for the month of April. Um because I want to start also doing wrap-ups for the films and television shows that I'm watching. Um, but, like, I have so many. There's so many, like, all together between books, TV, and movies that, uh, to me, it feels a little bit more logical to split it into two videos. So this will be my wrap-up video for the books that I read in April. And then the next video that I do will be my wrap-up video for the movies and TV shows that I watched in April. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, so yeah. Um, also, I'm, I want to mention that I'm not going to be doing a haul video uh, for the past month or so because I don't have anything to haul. I haven't made any purchases. So I, I have nothing to talk about there. Um, this is similar to why I'm not really doing a, a TBR for May, for specifically for the month of May. Um, you know, it's not that I'm not reading. I'm definitely still reading. I just don't know that I really have much to say about what I'm planning on reading for the next month, except for my R Fantasy Bingo card, which hopefully you've already watched that video. Um, so yeah, anyway... So this is my April reading wrap-up video. That's what we're gonna do. That's what we're gonna do here. Um, I have my laptop here so that I can go through the books that I actually read. Um, so yeah, I read, uh, I finished 11 books in the month of April. So fine, great. That I'm, can my reading continues apace. Um, I will say, you know, the biggest contributing factor to this, well, it's sort of dual contributing factors to the number of books that I've been able to read so far this year is, um, one is I'm making the effort to read every single day. Um, and I have success, I've been successful at that. Um, and it's one of those things where it's like, when I, when I make the effort to sit down and read every day, um, even if it's just a couple of pages, as often as not, that couple of pages turns into an entire chapter, turns into five chapters, turns into 10 chapters. So um, that's one big reason why I've been able to read as much as I have. The other one is just that I'm listening to a lot more audiobooks. I have a job that has a fair amount of downtime and allows me to listen to audiobooks. And so aver on average, about half of the books that I uh, read are actually um, audiobooks. And most of that is done at work. Um, I just listen to audiobooks while I work. Um, so that's a big part of it. And yeah, my stats for April are pretty standard. Most of what I read was fantasy. Most of what I read was fiction, though there's, you know, a few exceptions to that. There's a little bit of nonfiction. There's a little bit of non-fantasy in there. Um, 
and uh, yeah, some contemporary fiction, some different things in here this month. Uh, so let's get into the actual titles. Um, the first book that I completed in the month of April is just a little fun library checkout um, called Becoming Nick and Nora, The Thin Man and the Films of William Powell and Myrna Loy by Rob Kozlowski. Um, again, this is just a little book that um, I saw that my library picked up and so I grabbed it um, because I'm a huge fan of The Thin Man. Um, it's one of my favorite movies of all time. And I really like William Powell and Myrna Loy as actors. Um, I like their collaborations and I like their, their movies just separately as well. Um, so, you know, this was a short read. It was an easy read. Um, you know, I will say this is a book that is um, pretty niche, right? <laughs> like, you're probably only going to read this book if you um, have this very specific set of interests. Um, and honestly, if you have this very specific set of interests, this book probably won't won't tell you anything you didn't already know. Um, it certainly didn't tell me anything I didn't already know about the, either these two actors or the films that they made together. Um, but it was fun. It was fun to read. Um, so I ended up giving it a 3.75 stars because um, it was a f it was a fun read. Like the best part of this book for me definitely was the part where he talked in detail about both the production and just sort of an analysis of the original Thin Man film, which is obviously a very good movie, and he obviously likes it as much as I like it, <laughs> and it, that enthusiasm really shone through on the page, um, and it was just fun to read someone being as enthusiastic about that movie as I can be about that movie, so it was a fun read. Um, not really much to it, but fun. Uh, then I read Norse Mythology by Neil Gaiman. I'm not going to say too much about it here, um, except to say that I loved it. I gave it five stars. I did a video review of it, so I'll probably post a link to that. Um, and I did listen to the audiobook, which was read by, by the author, Neil Gaiman. Um, and that really enhanced the experience for me, um, because Neil Gaiman is just as good of a reader as he is a writer. Um... Then I uh, read Royal Assassin by Robin Hobb. Um, I don't have it immediately next to me, which is fine. Um, but yeah, this, so this is the second in the Farseer trilogy and the second in the Realm of the Elderlings series. Um, and I loved it. I thought it was amazing. Um, did I do a video review of this? I think I may have. I'll link to it, but I loved it. If five stars, Fitz continues to be a great character. There's just a wonderful, wonderful set of characters in these books that I really thoroughly enjoy reading about. Um, and her writing style is just great. Um, yeah, I mean, 10 out of 10, no notes, basically. The next book I finished uh, is called The Kalini Case. This is by Ferdinand von uh, uh, Schirach. Um, this is a German novel. Uh, I read it for the um, Storygraph Reads the World Challenge, um, the Germany prompt. This is a, a, a German author uh, writing in German about a German subject. I Obviously, I read, uh, well, I listened to uh, an English translation of it. Um, it's an interesting little book. It's fiction, but it is kind of a polemic. Um, it was published first published in 2011, I believe. And this book is ostensibly a sort of legal drama about um, the murder of a wealthy German businessman by um, an Italian man named Collini, um, who fully admits to the crime, you know, allows himself to be arrested brought up on charges, but refuses to explain why he murdered uh, this man. And the young green defense attorney who is tasked with defending uh, this man in the, in the trial um, is trying to figure out why he did it. He's trying to find any sort of extenuating circumstances, you know, so that he can help his client get, get a lenient sentence or whatever. Um, 
and it really digs into the German legal system in the post-Nazi era and the ways in which um, former Nazis were able to sort of get away with the things that they did um, and not experience any consequences for them. Um, and so uh, I, e there was even an addendum to the audiobook that I listened to that said that this book was was used like in an actual like legal review of like German laws regarding like statute of limitations on Nazi war crimes and things like that. So it was clearly like intended to be like a polemic, despite the fact that it is technically fictional. I will say it works better as a kind of again, a kind of illustration of the German legal system than it does as a fiction. Um, I gave it 3.75 stars because, yeah, like, I didn't really care too much about the characters themselves. I thought the characters themselves were pretty much all ciphers. They were pretty one note. Um, the case itself was interesting. You know, the, the intricacies of the sort of the German legal system and the various loopholes that former Nazis were able to exploit in order to get away with their crimes was definitely enlightening. But the like the the actual like fictional story itself was not terribly engaging as far as I was concerned. So that's how I felt about the Kalini case. Then I read um, Emily Wilde's Map of the Otherlands. And once again, I don't think I have it near me to hold up or anything. Um, but I thoroughly enjoyed this. This is by Heather Fawcett, of course. This is the second Emily Wilde book. I read um, the first one, Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies, in January, and also really enjoyed that one. Um, they're super fun, super cute, um, you know, not much, pretty lighthearted. I really appreciate the, um, again, the the... As I said when the first in my review of the first book, I really like the way that the fa fairies are actually portrayed in these books as being um, both sort of ridiculous uh, to humans, but also really scary. <laughs> they can they can sort of be a little bit of both, right? They can and they can switch very easily between the two modes of sort of ridiculousness and also just just being really creepy and scary. Um, and that also continues in this book. Um, I definitely feel like, one, the relationship between Emily and Bambleby is becoming much more significant as the story, as this, these books sort of progress. And two, so it's becoming, it's leaning more, I think, into like romanticy subgenre as opposed to, I think the first one felt a little bit less like a, rom a proper romanticy than it did just sort of a cute, cozy fantasy with a little bit of, with a little bit of romance tossed in for spice. So there, that that is happening, um, which you know, it, whether that's good or bad, I don't know. I mean, I still enjoy, I thoroughly enjoyed this book. Um, it doesn't really bother me necessarily, um, but it may bother some people that there's more of an emphasis on the relationship. Um, the other thing is I do feel like the stakes are getting a little bit bigger too. Um, in the first book, I felt like the stakes were slightly more on a personal individual level. In the second book, it does feel like the stakes are getting a little bit broader. I did give it four stars. I really enjoyed it. Um, those are some of my comments, thoughts about it. Um, it's super fun. Uh, then the next book I read was A Lemon by Kwan Yu Sun. Um, this is a Korean? Korean book. Um, and this was for, I believe, the Storygraph genre challenge, which was to read a crime novel in translation. It's theoretically, it's kind of a crime novel. Um, it's about the murder of a young woman right around the time of the Seoul Olympics, the Olympic Games that were held in Seoul, South Korea in the early aughts. Um, again, it's fiction, it's literary fiction, it's ostensibly kind of a mystery, but honestly, it's less of a mystery, uh, less of a sort of straightforward who done it or, you know, who 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 actually murdered this girl, and more just about like the way that her death sort of has repercussions through the years or, uh, uh, around and around the people that she that she interacted with and that she loved so you know it follows like her sister 
um, who is trying to find her killer. It follows uh, a couple of other people um, who knew her or who, who were sort of accused of her murder or, or sort of, um, sort of per people of interest in, in the case. Um, and yeah, a lot of it is more to do with just like trauma, <laughs> the, the way that this, that this murder traumatized the people around her, um, and that it, how it affects them sort of in the long term. Um, so it's a really interesting book. Um, I'm, I'm not sure it really landed for me, uh, but it was definitely interesting. I gave it 3.75 stars. Um, I think the ending really affected me. It was a really affecting ending. Um, but some of the lead up to it wasn't, didn't quite grab me. Uh, and then I read uh, Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury. Um, that's my sort of classic pick for the month. Um, and I did a, a sort of video review of it that I'll link to. So I'm again, I'm not going to say a whole lot about this book, except to say that I really enjoyed it. I gave it five stars. Um, I think it's a really important book and I'm glad I read it. Um, and if you want more, you can always watch my video on it. Uh, and then I read uh, Paladin's Hope by T. Kingfisher. This is the third book in the Saint of Steel series. Um, this one is, so if you if you don't know this series, it's a, ser it's a romanticy series, a uh, romance fantasy. Um, and each book follows, one of the protagonists is um, a paladin of the Saint of Steel. Saint of Steel is a god, um, who uh, at the beginning of the series has died. Their god has died and um, they are berserker paladins specifically. And so um, a lot of them are sort of dealing with the survivors of this event are all sort of dealing with their trauma and coming to terms with their life after the death of their god. Um, and this one uh, was pretty fun. I enjoyed it. Um, this is actually a gay romance. Um, the first two were both male-female pairings. This is uh, two men. Um, and I enjoyed it for the most part. I gave it four stars. I will say the one problem I had with it was that a large chunk of it ended up basically being a dungeon crawl. And I'm not, I'm not the biggest fan of dungeon crawls in general. So that got a little... It, it felt a little repetitive to me after a certain point. Um, but everything else about the book is great. The characters are great. The relationship was fun. Um, the story is good. T. Kim Fisher's world building continues to be really good. I love this world that these books are set in. Um, and I really enjoy all the characters. Um, so I'll, you know, I'll definitely be continuing. I think there's one more in this series that is currently published and available and I'll probably be reading that pretty soon in order to be caught up on the series um and I know she's written some other books set in the same universe but that involve like different characters and different scenarios um so I'll probably read those as well but yeah I, I continue to really enjoy T. Kingfisher um her writing her sense of humor um her world building her character work it's all really great and then next I read um, Artificial Condition by Martha Wells. This is the second in the Murderbot Diaries. Um, and I really enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. Um, once again, I listened to it on audio as I did with the first one. Really enjoy the audiobooks of these. I really love the, the sense of humor in them. And I love just the general idea of, you know, Murderbot sort of, <laughs> especially in this one where it's very much like Murderbot is trying to be, trying to pretend to be human for at least a good chunk of this story. Um, and it's really funny to watch it try to do that and try to sort of ape sort of human responses and emotions to things um, when, you know, it clearly, it obviously isn't. Um, so yeah, that's that was definitely a really fun time, um, and I enjoyed it. So yeah, I gave it four stars. It was it was good. I'm continuing to uh, in, really enjoy the Murderbot Diaries as these fun little, especially as audiobooks. Uh, they're all, you know so far at least they're they're quite short. Um, they're fun to listen to. I get a good chuckle out of them, and they explore some some interesting themes and ideas that I find you know really really fun to to explore in fiction. So yeah. Uh, and then uh, I finally finished uh, a buddy read 
sort of, with my best friend, um, to Venture Nights. This is a collection of short stories set in the Dragon Age universe. If you're not familiar, Dragon Age is um, my favorite video game series of all time. Um, and it has, uh, if you like fantasy at all, then the Dragon Age games may very well be something that you would be interested in trying um, if you have any kind of interest in, in video games at all. Because um, they're fun, dark fantasy. Uh, it's a fun sort of dark fantasy sandbox setting with a lot of different stories in it. Each each game, there's three uh, so far, and a fourth one hopefully will be out in the next couple of years. Um, and each one is a different story with a different protagonist, and they're RPGs, so you sort of create your own uh, protagonist and you play out the story in various ways. It's a sort of choose your own adventure kind of situation, so you can kind of craft your own uh, story as you go. And there's also a number of tie-in novels and comics and also this short story collection, To Winter Nights, which was published a few years ago. This is a reread for me. Um, I have been going through all the Dragon Age games and tie-in books with my best friend. Um, we played them together, sort of-ish. They're single player, so you can't actually like play the multiplayer, but we managed it. <laughs> we, we figured out a way to do it. And then I have been reading the books to them. Um, so yeah, this is the most recent, the last sort of book in that sequence of tie-in books. Um, I really enjoy these short stories. I think they're really good. Again, it's one of those things where it's like, if you're if, if you like Dragon Age, if you like the Dragon Age games, then I highly recommend that you read To Venture Nights. They're very good short stories, and some of them may tie into the the game that's coming out in the future, Dreadwolf, the next game. Possibly, maybe we'll see. But yeah, it's really fun. They're really fun stories. I enjoyed them a lot. Uh, rated it four stars. The final book that I read this month was A Power Unbound by Freya Marski. This is the final book in the last binding trilogy. Um, as I've said in my previous video when I uh, reviewed A Restless Truth, which is the second book, this is a trilogy of um, queer romanticy novels um, with a, a, an overarching plot that covers all three books. Um, I enjoyed this quite a bit. I gave it five stars. Um, this one, for me, I really feel like she stuck the landing on this one. Um, the overarching plot in the second book, admittedly, I enjoyed the second book a lot, but I wasn't always sure where the overarching plot was going to sort of wind up. And for the most part, I feel like she did a very, very good job of winding it up in this in this book. Um, it's super fun. I did not necessarily expect what was going to happen, which is cool. Um, and also the central relationship in this book was really interesting, I felt. Um, there's some really interesting power dynamics going on with this with this one in particular in large part because one of them is uh, an aristocrat uh, born into wealth and privilege, and the other is uh, a much more of a working class sort of guy. Um, they met in the second book, in the, in the previous book in this trilogy, and, and it's definitely a kind of enemies to lovers situation, unlike the, the first two, which weren't really enemies to lovers, but this one is definitely more of an enemies to lovers-ish thing. Um, it does get a little bit... Uh, this, the sex scenes get a little bit on the sort of kinky side. They do a little bit of role playing. Um, and they do a little bit of playing with, again, the power dynamics there and the class dynamics. Um, but I thought it, it worked really well for me. It was well done. It was interesting. It was all fully consensual. Um, so yeah, I enjoyed it thoroughly. Um, it has a great, yeah, th these books, The Last Binding Trilogy, it just like they work really well for me because they strike for me the perfect balance between having this plot and this story that overarches the whole trilogy with great world building and interesting characters and and yeah just the, the plot side of things and the actual 
romanticy side of things where they each have a different relationship that develops over the course of the books and those characters work really well together and all of those uh, romance aspects of it also work really well and they for me at least they mesh really well together so this is a really good trilogy uh, of romanticies for me um, and yeah so that's all the books that I read in April uh, what books did you read in April what did you enjoy what are you looking forward to leave them in the comments below um, as I said the next video I'll be talking about the movies and television shows that I watched in April I watched some really good ones so stick around for that um, yeah, and I'll, as always, you can like, subscribe to my channel, all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!